by 2050, the world's population is expected to grow to more than 9 billion people, and feeding them will be a big challenge due to the industrial development and urbanization we're losing urban lands every day. Scientists reported that the Earth had lost a third of its arable lands over the previous 40 years. Increasing food demands, along with decreasing arable lands, poses one of the greatest challenges that facing us. Many believe that vertical farming can be a solution. So is vertical farming the future of agriculture? Let's find out. Welcome to Game Changer Tech. The greatest benefit of vertical indoor farming is its ability to greatly conserve natural resources such as land, water, and nutrients. But what does vertical farming mean? Well, it's a way of farming vertical services rather than traditional horizontal farming by using vertical stacked layers. Farmers can produce much more foods on the same amount of land. Often these layers are integrated into buildings such as skyscrapers, house in a warehouses, or shipping containers. But this method of farming requires an artificial control on temperatures, light, and humidity to succeed. If a delicate balance is not maintained, it's possible to lose an entire crop. Now, instead of soil, aeroponic, aquaponic, or hydroponic growing mediums are used. Pet moss or coconut husk and similar non-soil mediums are very common in vertical farming. But what are those growing mediums stands for? Well, aeroponic involves the growing of plants in an air or mist environment. With no soil and very little water, the plants get the nutrient from the mist that comes from the burrow. Another technique used in vertical farms is aquaponics. In this system, Fish grow in indoor ponds and produce nutrient-rich waste that acts as a food source for the plants grown in vertical farms. The plants, in return, purify and filter the wastewater, which is recycled directly back into the fish ponds. While in hydroponic method, the roots of the plants are submerged in a nutrient-rich solution, which is frequently circulated and monitored. Now, like any new technology, it comes with pros and cons. So the pros are, it offers a plan to handle future food demands. Vertical farming allows us to produce more crops from the same square footage of a growing area. In fact, one acre of indoor area offers equivalent production to at least four to six acres of outdoor capacity. It allows crops to grow year round. It uses significantly less water, and compared with the normal cultivation, vertical farming requires 95% less amount of water. Weather doesn't affect the crops, so the torrential rain, cyclones, flooding, or severe droughts wouldn't affect the crop. There is a less exposure to chemical and diseases, and this is a very critical point, since vertical farming allows us to grow pesticide-free organic crops, and the farmers are less exposed to the diseases like malaria. While the cones are, it could be very costly to build, cause it depends on a fully automated system that uses high technology. Pollination would be very difficult and costly since vertical farming takes place in a controlled environment without the presence of insects. As such, Pollination process needs to be done manually, which will be labor intensive and costly. There are currently about 2.2 million square foot of indoor farms operating across the globe, and that number is expected to increase. One of the biggest reasons vertical farming is now visible is it due to the advancement of sensors, smart energy system, and other technologies that make growing more efficient. Just like many people using smart devices and automation to make their homes more convenient. Vertical farms are typically automated to control light, temperature, and water use. They allow farmers to optimize the condition required for growing to produce the food that consumers want most at the store. 
traditional in-ground agriculture will continue to produce the vast majority of our staple crops in the decades ahead. That is certain. Vertical farms, though, can play a key role in producing local and perishable specialty crops. They can eliminate fuel-intensive long-distance trucking along with the food rot and waste. When located in near cities, they have the added advantage of being protected from the supply chain disruptions like the ones we are seeing today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.